Hello guys, welcome back to the FE exam review series where I cover the most common FE problems that you need to know to pass your FE exam. In today's video, we'll be covering another static section problem, specifically under part F, moment of inertia. So let's dive in. Oh yeah, Okay guys, so in this problem, we are giving this shape and we want to find the moment of inertia about the x-axis, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and split this shape into two shapes, okay? So we're going to have shape one and this is going to be shape two. Now, for shape one, the moment of inertia about the x-axis is just going to be ix. So the, you can find that equation for a rectangle under the table, under statics, okay, on the reference handbook. And the reason why we can actually use just ix for shape one, it's because shape one is already on the x-axis, right? And we are trying to find the moment of inertia about the x-axis. So we don't need to use the parallel axis theorem equation, and we can just go ahead and use the equation ix. Now, for shape two, however, we have to use the parallel axis theorem because shape two is not on the x-axis, right? It's 300 away from the x-axis, okay? Now, let's go to the reference handbook and take a look at the, the um, parallel axis theorem equation. So we have here ix, so it's going to be ixc. So we're gonna have to use the moment of inertia about the centroidal x-axis equation for the rectangle, okay? And then we have dy here. Now, dy is the distance between the two axes in question. But what are the two axes in question, right? Well, it's going to be the distance from the x-axis, because that's where we're trying to find the moment of inertia about, right? To the centroid of shape 2, okay? So that's going to be dy. Now, if you guys remember from the previous problem, when we tried to find the moment of inertia about the centroid or x-axis, the two axes in question were different than what we just described here, right? So if you haven't checked that video yet, make sure that you guys do. It's very important that you guys know how to solve for moment of inertia about the centroid or x-axis, the moment of inertia about the x-axis, which we're going to cover today and then the moment of inertia about a given axis. Now, if you guys want to see that problem, let me know in the comments below and I'll make a video on that next. Now, with that information, I want you guys to go ahead and give this problem a try. Go ahead and pause the video, attempt it, and I will see you in a little bit. Now, if you guys like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps the channel out immensely. Okay, guys, so let's first start with shape one, okay? So as we mentioned earlier, because shape one is already on the x-axis, we're just going to use the equation ix that's on the reference handbook, okay? So let's go to the reference handbook and take a look. Here at the end of statics, you guys have this table. It has all the moment of inertia equations. Now, we have a rectangle, right? So we're going to take a look at these equations, and this is the equation ix. So this is what we're going to use, bh cubed over 3, right? And that's it. So the moment of inertia for shape 1 is just going to be bh cubed over 3 because it is already on the x-axis. So let's write that down. So we're going to have ix is going to be equal to b. So again, let's define here what's b, what's h. This is something students um, confuse sometimes. So h is usually the height, b is the width. So we're going to have b is going to be 25, right? h is going to be 300. And we're going to cube this, and then we're going to divide it by 3. Now, before we start solving for shape 2, I would like to share with you guys something. So one time I was teaching moment of inertia in one of our weekly meeting calls, and one of our students asked me this. He was like, when do I know when to use ix and iy, right? And we came up with these two questions here. So the first question is, are you solving for moment of inertia about the x-axis? And if the answer is no, then you can't use ix or iy, okay? Now, if the answer is yes, then go ahead and ask yourself the second question. Is the shape on the x-axis, okay? If the answer is yes, then you can use ix. If the answer is no, then you can't use ix and you would have to use the parallel axis theorem, okay? Now, let's go ahead and apply these, uh, use these two equations and apply it to our shape, okay? So for shape one, Okay, are we solving for moment of inertia about the x-axis? The answer is yes, right? Because that's that's really the question. Now, if we ask the second question here, is the shape on the x-axis? The answer is yes, and therefore we have to use 
or we can use ix right and that's exactly what we did here now let's go ahead and apply the same questions for shape two so are we solving for moment of inertia about the x-axis again yes because that's the question the second question we have here is the shape on the x-axis the answer is no right so that means we're going to have to use the parallel axis theorem and remember dy is going to be the distance from x to the centroid of shape two so let's go ahead now and start solving for shape two now let's go ahead and solve for shape two so we're going to have ixc right so let's go to the reference handbook and take a look at the equation so ixc for rectangle is bh cubed over 12. now b here is 400 and then h is going to be 25 and then we're going to cube it and then divide it by 12. okay then we're going to have plus the area which is 400 times 25 and then times dy now we as we mentioned already dy is going to be the distance from the x-axis to the centroid of shape 2 okay so it's going to be this whole distance here so this distance here is 12.5 this is 300 so it's going to be 312.5 and then squared okay so all of this is for shape 2 so this is ix2 okay now if you guys plug in these numbers in your calculator you should get 1.2 times 10 to the power of 9, and then millimeters to the power of 4. So if we take a look at the multiple choice, the answer is going to be B. Now, another thing I would like to add here, guys, is that for shape 1, there's actually another way we can solve for it, okay? So if you want to use the parallel axis theorem for shape 1, you can. And the equation would be Ixc, right? So we would have to use bh cubed over 12 plus the area for shape 1 times dy squared. Now, dy is going to be the same as what we did with shape 2, right? It's just going to be the distance from the x-axis to the centroid of shape 1, which is going to be 300 over 2, which is 150, right? So, yeah, so there are two ways you can solve for, for shape 1. I showed you guys, I used ix, it's because that's the fastest way to solve for shape 1. And on the FE exam, with time management and making sure that you have to finish your exam on time, it's very important that you know what's the fastest way to get to the answer right that's going to save you a lot of time and you know another thing I would like to also add is that when you guys are preparing for your FE exam when you're studying when you're doing problems make sure you know exactly what you're doing and make sure you really have a good understanding of the concepts you know especially now with the FE exam it's just getting harder and then the, there are more conceptual questions and so having that deep understanding of the foundation of engineering and of the concepts is really going to help you pass your FE. So when you're solving problems, you know, try to engage with the problem. Try to ask yourself, you know, why did we use this equation? Is there another way to, you know, solve this problem, right? It's not just about, you know, grabbing the equation, plugging the numbers and get the answer, right? Because you might not get the same exact problems as on your FE. And so you have to really make sure that you understand really well what you're doing. Now, before we end this video, I would like to share with you guys one more thing. So here, what I did is I summarized dy for the three different types of moment of inertia, right? Because I feel like a lot of people are confused about dy and dx, although we do have the definition, which is the distance between the two axes in question. But a lot of people are like, what does that even mean, right? So let's go ahead and go over that together. So if the question asks you to find the moment of inertia about the x or y axis, right? and you are using the parallel axis theorem equation, dy or dx is going to be the distance from the x or y axis to the centroid of each shape, right? Just like we did in this problem for shape two, okay? Now, we didn't do that for shape one, or we chose not to because we used ix because it was just faster. But if we did use the parallel axis theorem, we would have applied the same thing, right? Now, the second case here we have is moment of inertia about the centroidal x or y axis, and that's the distance from the centroid of the whole shape to the centroid of each shape, okay? And a lot of times when you are giving this question, you would have to find the centroid first of the whole shape before you can actually start solving for the moment of inertia, okay? And that's what we covered in the previous problem. So make sure that you check that out. And then lastly, we have the moment of inertia about x prime or y prime x okay and dy or dx here is going to be the distance from the x prime or y prime axis to the centroid of each shape okay now that's the the problem that i might cover in the future if you guys of course are interested in that problem just let me know in the comments below and i'll make a video on that next
And if you guys don't want to write this down, you can just grab our cheat sheet here. It has all this information and so much more concepts and equations that you need to know for your FE exam. Now, if you guys like this video and you are currently preparing for your FE exam and you are looking for study material that will actually help you pass your FE, make sure to check out our courses here. It has helped hundreds of students pass the FE exam. And before you go, make sure to check out this playlist here that has over 100 FE problems. Now, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great week and I will see you on the next video. A la prochaine. Oh yeah,